Welcome back. Welcome back. That's the. St I don't know how I got stuck with that intro, but it, that that's what it is now. You're not getting rid of it. If you happen to find yourself on Author Tube today, my name is Ella. This is my channel where I talk about writing and laugh a lot and edit bad. So, <laughs> happy spooky season. It's October, which means it's spooky season. <laughs> Duh. And I did my makeup all scary. See, I was supposed to be a cat because I wanted to dress up for all of my October videos. But I look more like Satan. And, um, also, the ears did not fit over my little ponytail right here. So, I kind of just, like, cut that part out. Um... I also wanted to quickly go over my video plan for October. I want to do four videos. I do not want to skip any more weeks because it's annoying for both of us. <laughs> my devoted seven followers. I want to do three videos about horror because it's spooky season and we all deserve it. Then I want to do one video about NaNoWriMo probably the third week because I can't be a channel <laughs> about writing without talking about NaNoWriMo. Okay, and today, that brings me to what we're doing, I'm going to do an exploration of genre. It's just going to be a quick video. I'm going to go over all of the things super quickly, all of the different subgenres of horror, so you can identify what stuff's interesting to you. Maybe if you've written something in the horror genre, you can like see what subgenre yours actually classifies as. I'm going to be providing examples of books and movies to watch or read if you find these interesting. Let's get started first with comedy horror. A lot of these titles are very self-explanatory. And it's basically a genre that combines horrific and comedic elements. It's horror, except it's funny. It tries to be funny. A lot of the times it's not. <laughs> and a lot of times it verges on satirical, like the movies Ready or Not or Happy Death Day. I've watched Happy Death Day and the sequel. I liked them enough, and then I haven't seen Ready or Not, but I really want to. Um, in a book, I couldn't really find any good examples for this, but it'd be like Pride and Prejudice and Zombies by, by Seth Graham Smith. By the way, just read How to Survive a Horror Movie by Seth Graham Smith. I loved it. It was so much fun. It was perfect for anyone who loves, like, horror movies. The next genre is folk horror, which is a genre that often takes place in a British setting where the location where it takes place is inherently evil. It often includes witches, religious figures, and ancient curses. Those are all very prominent in the genre. So like, I don't know how to pronounce this, Midsummer, Midsommar? The Witch, or The Vavitch, love that movie, it's on Netflix. The Wicker Man. There's two of those. Watch the first one. <laughs> and then, oh, books would be The Hidden People by Alison Littlewood and The Ritual by Adam Neville, neither of which I have read. I googled examples because I have not been reading as much horror as I should be, so October, I'm really focusing on reading horror books. I have my Edgar Allan Poe anthology my Stephen King books. I I put a Stephen King at the top of my little bookshelf here. There's also Red, White, Red, White, and Royal Blue, which is not a horror book, but it is a very cute romance. But read it in November. October's for horror. Next we have body or biological horror, which is horror that depicts graphic or disturbing images in the human body with intentions of Format. It can include, but not limited to, mutations, mutilations, violence, gore, zombification, or dissections. It, it's pretty much just meant to gross out the consumers. The, it's gross. It's gory. <laughs> um, so basically like anything Jungji Ito, that's a manga, but it's, it's, it's very body horror if you, that's what you're looking for. The Deep by Nick Cutter, and then movie would be like the thing body horror next is kind of a sub genre of a sub genre it's a sub sub genre there's like three of these um of the body horror and it's medical horror which is basically horror that comes that's derived from illness or injury so medical it yeah yeah like the like 
the name of the sub sub genre. That makes sense. Next is sci-fi horror, science fiction horror, which is a genre that combines horror and science fiction. <sighs> Who could have guessed? So, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. You're looking for a classic. I have not read it, but I want to. <laughs> um, I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream by Harry and Ellison, which I did read. I did not like. But, you know, it is a horror and sci-fi classic, so what do I know? It's a short story. The movies would be like The Platform and A Quiet Place. I loved them both. I've been doing this too much. And then Brightburn, which I'm not seeing. Again, Google these exams. Maybe I shouldn't, like, parade that. I, no, none of this, all of this video is research. I did a lot of research. I have a really good typed out note sheet that I'm literally just reading from. It's basically a school project. I'm sorry, this is so awkward. Okay, next is Slasher, which is mostly a ho like a horror movie genre, but it also could be a book genre. It's basically a set killer or killers going around and killing a group of people one by one, you know? You know, like Halloween, Friday the 13th, child's play you know you know i say that so much in all my videos i make and then i make fun of myself saying you know oh and then books is there's someone inside your home by stephanie perkins and psycho by upper block which is not how you pronounce his last name but i can't pronounce names i should have put this at the beginning so if any of these names are pronounced incorrectly it's because I can't speak. That's why I'm a writer. <laughs> Next is splatter horror and it is a sub sub genre of the slasher and it's horror that is intentionally bloody or gory or violent just for shock value. They go for terror first and then horror and if they can't do that then they just go bloody for shock value. So I consider this not very scary and more for shock value but that is very popular. I do think slashers are very entertaining. Friday the 13th actually came out on my birthday. It's not crazy. It's 25 years older than me. That's cool, right? I just learned that two days ago. It's so much fun. The next genre is supernatural horror, which is horror that features supernatural occurrences meant to unsettle, disturb, or frighten. So like ghosts or supernatural beings spirits stuff so like the conjuring annabelle anything in that universe um sinister it ouija anything from the 2010s really is like that ghost family drama that has not good enough lighting but then again what horror movie does um and then we have like dracula by bram stoker and Carrie by Stephen King. Love Carrie so much. Next we have psychological horror, my favorite. That's what I write, I write psych horror. Which is horror that is focused on mental, emotional, and psychological states to disturb or scare the reader, the, the watcher, the consumer. So The Silence of the Lambs by Thomas Harris. Haven't read it, seen the movie, great movie. Um, the Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. Most Stephen King, and here's a poor distinction, horror books. Because he writes non-horror, but everything he writes is classified as horror because he's seen as the big horror author. But most of his horror is psychological horror. Then we have a sub-sub genre of this, which is madness horror, which specifically is um referring to extreme mental illness or insanity next we have a fun one we have holiday horror which is a horrific plot that takes place or centers around a holiday mostly mostly christmas or halloween i've never really seen a saint patrick's day horror you know arbor day horror so you know movies like krampus or black christmas they both center around Christmas. And then, can someone, is this how you pronounce it? It's like N-O-S-4-A-2 by Joe Hill. 
So like a license plate number. I have not read that, but when I you type in holiday horror, this book came up like the whole like it was like all this book. Um, and then No Exit by Taylor Adams does take place on Christmas Eve, but it's not really a holiday horror book because it's not revolving around the holiday. I just want to mention it because I love that book so much. I love No Exit by Taylor Adams. Read it. It's it's a really good, it's more on the thriller side. It's a good thriller. It, it gave me a scare. So next we have Gothic Horror, which is another horror that I love because it's so fun and atmospheric. It's not that fun, actually. It's more like somber most of the time in tone, but you know any of these put your own spin on it that'd be really cool <laughs> it's a genre that combines fiction and horror often including deaths and romance so Horace Walpole created it with his novel the castle of or I can't say this word Oof. people are gonna make fun of me because I can't say the names of basic like classic literature authors in the castle of otranto i'll put the i'll put it on screen so you know what i'm trying to say um basically he was credited for the creation of this genre then we have the strange case of Do dr jekyll and mr hyde by robert louis stevenson the turn of the screw by henry james and then a more recent book, a very recent book, 2020 release, would be um, Mexican to Gothic by Sylvia Marina. Oh wait, no, I forgot movies. Movies would be The Phantom of the Opera, The Woman in Black, and then Jane Eyre, which is also a book, but it didn't say for examples for books. It also only said examples for movies. So Next we have Natural Horror, which is a horror that um, incorporates horror in nature, like plants, trees, animals. So we have like movies, we have Cujo and frogs and anything like that. Not very many examples. I couldn't find any like well-known books. Next we have survival horror, which is less of a literature or movie genre and it's more of a video game genre because it fits really well into the video game algorithm, algorithm, like equation. I don't know anything about video games. It's horror that where the protagonist is facing an evil with the intent to just survive. Like surviving the night, that's a very popular trope, right? It's survival horror. So No Exit by Taylor Adams actually fits great in this one. So yeah, read it, it's so good. I loved it, so I loved every second of it. Movies would be 47 Meters Down and The Belco Experiment. I'm looking over here this whole time, I'm so sorry. I'm never, I'm good at videos, <laughs> but that's okay because people watch me, so they must find me some level of entertaining. That's what I strive for. Next we have surreal horror, which I also love. I write, I wrote a surreal horror short story and it was fun. It was like the most fun I've had writing a short story in a long time. So it's basically bizarre, nonsensical events that happen that make readers like anxious and confused because they don't know what's happening, but they know that they're scared. I couldn't find any recognizable examples really, and basically it's scary because anything could happen. There's like not a lot of limits because the whole point is that it doesn't make sense, which isn't comforting because people know, at least in a scary sense, the, the fact that stuff pieces together is more comforting in your mind but when there's such an abstract structure to it it's unsettling it's yeah next we have religious horror which is horror that revolves around theological or mythology myth mythological nailed it events so the exorcist rosemary's baby the nun the omen are all examples of movies and basically refers mostly to hellish realms with devilish beings, and that's what makes it scary. And I didn't put any book examples, but I'm sure there are. Again, I haven't read a lot of horror in a long time, and it makes me so sad. Probably because I've been stuck in the YA section, and oh my god, you can kill me when I find a good YA horror book. 
Don't get me started. Don't get me started. Don't get me started. Next, we're moving into ones that I couldn't really find a lot of examples for, but I'm still going to mention them because they're so cool and they're still subgenres of horror. First, we have mundane horror, which resides on realistic sides instead of fantastical. And then we have personal horror, which is horror developed through deep internal conflict and fighting their own mind instead of an external being. Cosmic horror, which is basically like Lovecraftian. It's made popular by H.P. Lovecraft. And it's a genre that revolves around mystery and, and entities inconceivable to the human race, like... The Cabin in the Woods and The Mist by Stephen King. I didn't even mean to put that on the top, but I just did some cautiously. See, I knew. This is also a movie. I haven't seen it, but I heard it's good. Did I mention that was cosmic horror? I must have. Next we have Dark Fantasy, which is, I just wrote in my notes, fantasy, but scary. So Coraline by Neil Gaiman. A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness, which is such a a good book such a good book it's not really that scary though so if you're new to horror i totally recommend the monster calls by patrick ness because we have almost last second to last existential horror which is horror that deals with the overall meaning of life yikes truly scary and the next we have the internet classified this as a horror genre i really don't know how to define it it's like they're th creepy pastas with to like internet horrors you know like stories made horrific on the internet i find these kind of particularly scary because of the lack of censorship that comes with like you know the industry the literature in the movie industries you have to have some level of censorship you have to have a rating but when you go onto the internet you you're lucky if you get like a content warning you know, which is why I don't read, <laughs> which is why I don't consume horror or like anything on the internet besides like watching Netflix because it's truly, truly very scary. But examples of this would be the Russian sleep experiment, Jeff the Killer, and The Rake. Yep. Which do sound a lot more like artificial compared to some of these, but... I don't know. I don't know. So yeah, that was my very chill, but also not chill at the same time, horror genre, horror genre, I was going to say exploration, but it's just me talking about the subgenres of horror, so. That's really all I have to say. I will be getting out more videos. If there's any of these specific genres that you are interested in, comment down below. Maybe I can do a whole video about them, or I could just like, or maybe I could do a more deep dive into some of the ones that you, you guys are interested in, if I get a lot, or I could just respond to your comment in a more in-depth way than I would in this video. Because again, this was just meant to be purely informational, and just like mentioning examples and definitions. So yeah. <laughs> Here are the books I have. Ugh. I have a real setup today. Different from my real setup last time because the sun was disagreeing with me, but yeah. I hope that you have a lovely day. If you happen to find yourself an author tube today, my name is Ella. <laughs> uh, I hope you have a great day. And happy spooky season. I'll see you next time. Bye! <laughs>